Okay. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ar Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Inshallah, we're going to try to get into some of the meat now of the New Testament. I hope we're going to make it with the time that we have. So inshallah, brothers, bear with me if I have to speed along a little bit. And, before, and as we begin, I'm going to begin with some of the things that the biblical scholars have said about their own book. I'm going to give you some of the, the things that the biblical scholars have said in reference to their own book, the Bible, and especially the New Testament. Now for sure, no biblical scholar in his right mind, uh, unless he's uh, um, attesting to his own lack of scholarship, will, and no biblical scholar will say that the Bible was written by Jesus himself at all. No, they all, they all agree that the Bible was written after Jesus had already left from this earth. And I, these are some of my notes that I did in my college courses, so I'm trying to pick them all up. Dr. William Graham Scrogi. William Graham Scrogi of the Moody Bible Institute. This is one of the most prestigious Bible institutes in the college. It's an evangelical institute. Uh, the, in, the place I was going to go is called Bob Jones University, which is conservative. It's a very conservative right-wing uh, prominent school in, in my hometown. It's uh, known worldwide. But Dr. W. Graham Scrogi of the Moody Institute, Chicago, and one of his uh, one of the one of the most prestigious Christian evangel missionaries in the world says on page 17 of his book, "It's human yet divine." This is what he named a book that he wrote about the Bible, and he titled the book and. Uh, it's Human Yet Divine. That's another book that I would suggest for you to read, even though I was not able to bring that one with me. It's a book by William Graham Scrogi called It's Human Yet Divine. He wrote, Yes, the Bible is human, although some out of zeal, which is not according to knowledge, have denied this. Those books have passed through the minds of men and are written in the languages of men were penned by the hands of men and bear in their style the characteristics of men. This is what he says about his own book. That they, this, the, this book, the Bible, came out of the minds of men and women. But you know, we, and it, usually when you use the ger, general men, it's using as, as carrying both weights, uh, even in, in a lot of languages. They are written in the languages of men. This is the beauty thing about, beautiful thing about the Qur'an. It's not written in the language of men. It's not written in the language of humans. And there are parts of the Old Testament, the Torah, that you can find that are written in languages that men do not speak. There are few and far in between, but there are pieces uh, that you can find that are written in the language of Hebrew, but it's not the Hebrew that people speak. And they bear, and they were pinned down by the hands of men, and they bear in their style the characteristics of men. And we know that men are perfect or imperfect, and transiently imperfect. We are imperfect. So if this whole book is through the minds of men, in the language of men, by the hands of men, and the characteristic and style of men, then that automatically gives the weight of imperfectness, because anything that we do is going to be imperfect at its best. At its best. Another author, um, this is one that I learned from one of my, a lot of things from him, not personally, but learn a lot of the things from his teachings, is uh, he's a Christian scholar named Kenneth Craig. Kenneth Craig is the Anglican Bishop of, anybody know? I doubt I want to, don't want to trick you like that. He's the Anglican Bishop of Al-Quds, of Jerusalem. <clears throat> he's the Anglican Bishop of Jerusalem named Kenneth Craig. He wrote a book, and the reason I asked you if you know who he was, any of you ever heard of him? Kenneth Craig. If not, know him. Uh, he wrote a book called The Call of the Minaret. He wrote a book called The Call of the Minaret. And if you've not read that book, then you don't really know how a Christian thinks. This book, The Call of the Minaret, is a manual of how to convert Muslims to Christianity. It's a manual about how to convert Muslims to Christianity and a crux of the uh, manual teaches trickery. How to appear to be a Muslim, how to go to Muslim countries, how to learn their customs, learn their ways, 
walk the walk, talk the talk, and then secretly call them to Islam. All of the missionaries you know that are doing this throughout the world, trace their understandings back to this guy, Kenneth Craig. He's the father of this type of understanding. This is what missionaries are doing in Iraq. This is what missionaries are doing in Afghanistan. This is what missionaries are doing in Palestine. This is what missionaries are doing in Saudi Arabia under the cover. And many of them have been caught. We know of instances of some of them that have been caught trying to do this. And this is the one thing that I like, you know, that, that I say, you know, that, you know, good for them. This is one thing that a Muslim is forbidden to do. We cannot even fight against them in this way because a Muslim is forbidden to lie. We are forbidden to, you know, to hide ourselves and try to trick people and all of this type of, of foolishness. This is not becoming of a, of a person of, of, of religion. But he wrote this book called The Call of the Minaret. Read it. Any of you that want to deal with, with uh, the Muslim countries and how to help them against these type of missionary attacks, you should read this book because it is being done. There are seminars in the United States, and I can't say in the UK because I don't know, but I guarantee you there are. But there, are sim uh, there are seminars being taught how to follow this manual, how to go to Muslim countries and appear to fit in and blend in and call people to Islam. You know these people that say they were so-called Muslims? These guys that say that I was used to be a Muslim and I converted to Christianity, this and that. They're trained by these type of people. They were never Muslim. They are never Muslim and I've been to a number of them, the prominent ones, lectures and have basically blasted them out. Basically, just blasted them out. You know this guy, Riza Shah? And you heard of this, this Riza Shah, Why I'm Not a Muslim? He wrote the book, Why I'm Not a Muslim? None of you have heard of this guy? He wrote a very famous book, you can find it in bookstores, called Why I Am Not a Muslim Anymore. He says that he was a, uh, at, at one point in time, he was an Al-Azhari scholar. He was an Al-Azhari sheikh. He was a Hafiz. And then he found Jesus. And he came to a conference with about five other people who said that they were Muslim. Grew up in Muslim homes and trained and all of this. And because I had a, I had a lecture called um, How the Bible Led Me to Islam. And they went and had a lecture the next week, How the Quran Led Them to Jesus. Little did they know I was still in the city. I was still in Houston. So I came to their lecture and I sit and I listen. Okay, I came and I sat and I listened to what they had to say and just waited. After all of the rubbish they gave, they gave no textual proof, everything was about how they feel and how Jesus made them feel and how this made them feel and how that made them feel. Not only did I say, well, making you feel good is no evidence for anything because the drug addict, drug addict will say that drugs make them feel good. Um, but I asked them, I said, I have one question. If any of you can answer it for me, then I'll agree with all of you. I said, actually, I'll ask you two questions. They said, okay. I said, number one, what is the meaning of Tawheed? Number two, tell me how many Sunnah, Salah, Raqqa uh, are in a day. How many Salah, Sunnah should we pray in a day? I said, if you can't do that, then at least tell me what are the number of all the Raqqas, of all the, the Fard Salah in one day. You know how many of those they could answer? Zero. I said, so stop playing games with me. Stop playing games with these people. You were never a Muslim. If you don't understand Tawheed and you're telling me you're an Ashari scholar, and you can't even tell me how many Sunnah Raqqas in a day, you can't even tell me how many Salah, how many Raqqas to pray for Fajr, Maghrib, Isha, and Asr. So, so just, just get out of here with this foolishness. So they, they, they are pretty much rubbish, but they get their understanding from, from this guy. And this guy, Kenneth Craig, wrote in this book called The Call of the Minaret. I read this book many times. He said, not so the New Testament. There is condensation and editing. How many of you know what condensation is? Give me, somebody give me a definition of condensation. The conversion of steam to water, right? The conversion of, of all of the steam compresses itself down. All of the molecules that make it light enough to float then are taken out so that it can become water, correct? That's the rudimentary understanding of condensation. So he said the Bible came through a process of condensation and editing. Condensation and editing. There is choice reproduction. What does that word choice reproduction mean? It means that I reproduce what I choose. 
In my copying, I choose and I pick what I reproduce. And witness, 